Hi, Ian Roberts and Mastering Composition. I was in a podcast, Learn to Paint podcast, last week, and I have a link to the interview. I think there's some really good questions in that, and I think you might find it interesting. So two weeks ago, I talked about planning in before painting. And I got some comments saying that people thought that, well, it sort of diminishes discovery and diminishes creativity when you do planning. And if you're doing non-representational painting, and you're going along and then halfway through you just think, well, I'm going to collage this big thing in the middle here. I mean, why not? But in representational painting, there's a series of conventions several hundred years old. An example would be perspective, say, or that colors diminish as they recede in space, atmospheric perspective. But there's a whole set of conventions. And I find myself that because of those conventions and because of certain expectations of those conventions, I find that the planning actually increases the discovery and increases the creativity. So let me give an example. Supposing my wife and I, Anne and I, are planning a trip, decide, let's go to Yosemite to go painting. And she draws a map and no talking GPS machines, just she draws a map and it looks, say, something like this. That's really all we need. We know with that map, we're going to get to Yosemite, probably. Now, if we said no maps, we're just heading north. And after about three hours, you're sort of going like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Aren't the mountains supposed to be on the left? And you realize you're going up the wrong side of the mountain range and you're who knows where you are. So supposing also that after looking at that piece of paper, I say, well, now I don't really want to go because, you know, all the discovery and the cre it's all, it's all, we've, we've already, it's already figured out, right? It's ridiculous. Now, supposing also that we plan a little bit more. Supposing we say, well, let's eat at that restaurant we like in Lone Pine. Let's take a little detour to go and look at the Bristlecone Pines on the way up. And let's spend three nights at the Iwani Hotel. Let's book that. Does it sound like with more planning, the trip's getting worse or better? It's getting better, right? It's increased the chances of having a good time. And I want to show you now how this applies to our painting. This is an image of the Lot River near a village called saint cirque le poppy in France. And I took it years ago, and I think I've probably already cropped it because uh, I really like it just the way it is. But you can see there's big shapes, dramatic light, and a natural flow down the river up towards the top right. This is a sketch I just did as an illustration for the video, but it's like a, plan, you know, a plein air thumbnail that you might do before you begin. The light's changing really quickly. You don't have a lot of time, but you want to make sure you're getting the big masses on your rectangle the way you want them to actually be in the end and not, oh my God, why didn't I think of that earlier? So the planning, you can see I sort of cut a piece off the right because I want more tension between that big rock face and the right hand edge, create more compression there. You can see where the darks are that are pulling me up there. But that is like a road map of how I want the eye to move. This is an actual sketch done just before doing a plein air painting. And you can see how malleable the left and right sides are in terms of where am I actually going to define this thing before beginning. And you can see these big simple shapes leading to the smaller, more complex shape. You can see it's like a map. This is how I want it to work on that rectangle. That's the planning. Now, if I were doing this painting, in fact, I do this painting and I'll show it to you next week. But I was in the studio, there's no rush, the light's not changing, I'm just working from the photograph. I could plan it out a little bit more carefully. I could block in just with two values, lights and darks and how I want the eye to go and how the overlapping shapes are going to move us back to the top right. There's a lot of planning in that. There's a lot of sense of the overlaps moving into space. It's very simple, but it's giving a good sense of how the painting will unfold. This is obviously a far more finished drawing. But again, it's stripped down in terms of when you look at it, it's really just, it's more finished, but there's just big value masses. 
and the contrast between them, their size and how the light is hitting and how the eye is going, you can tell a lot already about what this painting is going to do and you learn a lot as you do a drawing like this about what you're going to encounter as you paint it. So it's also an aspect of planning. It is not just, oh, I'm doing a drawing. I'm learning about what I'm about to paint. So here I've gridded the drawing, and this is a really useful way to get, if you like the image, to get it in there accurately. See that cross right where I'm going there? You can just see this little, and you'll see it again here. I come up to the cross there and I realize, oh, it just is coming over there. It's giving you 24 lines, six times as many reference points as just having the four edges of the rectangle. So if it's important to you, you like the image and you want to get it transferred well to a different scale, gridding is really useful. And so when I'm drawing like this, you'll see I'm completely simplifying all this stuff down in the bottom. It's just a big, simple mess. And I can tell you, drawing it like this really clarifies for me um, how I can simplify it. I'm sorry the camera's jiggling there. It happens a couple more times. I, I think I must have knocked the table or something. But you see how simple I'm making all this? That's how I'm figuring, oh, I can paint it like that. I am learning, as I do this, how I can paint it. And I took that tree out of the bottom right because I just wanted a big simple shape there and I wanted the water to go down, but I'll keep it really simple. Wanted that sky just sort of popping through. And now there's this big mass of plants and things on the, on the wall, the rock wall, but I want it really dark as it comes up to those trees on the river so that we really get the sense of contrast and light. But I've simplified it into a shape. I realize when I come to paint it, I can do that. And that frees up my creativity. I'm not sitting there wondering, oh, how am I going to paint that? What am I going to do here? I've kind of figured a lot out. And there's so many wonderful things about mixing the paint and putting it on and the way the color is going and how it starts to come together. It doesn't diminish the creativity or the discovery or the joy in any way. To my mind, it just enhances it because it's given me a freedom just to sort of know what I'm going to do rather than blundering around trying to figure it out as I go along. So I find this process very, very helpful actually to ensure that the painting is probably going to work. I mean, not always, but probably puts it sort of on the success side of uh, the equation. And as I say, it just kind of releases the, the concerns about it because I figured out so many things in the, bra in the drawing practice. So, I mean, just look at that wall of rock there. You could imagine like, oh, I see there's all these little facets and rocks and cracks and plants. How am I going to deal with that? Well, I'm figuring with a pencil. Let's just keep it simple. And then I realized, well, actually it works pretty much just like that. Why do I need more? And then down here, I'm drawing uh, the two trees. And you'll see that I'll draw the lit side right here now. I'm sort of figuring, okay, where is this actually going to be? That's the lit shape. And then I'll just put in the shadow in behind it. Lit side, dark side, lit side dark side. And the line is quite heavy when I drew it in because there's going to be a dark right up against it so we won't see the line. I mean it's important not to get too many lines in it. You want it to be the masses that read, not a bunch of lines with sort of masses that you can see within it. But you'll see, I'll just bring this right down as a dark simple shape and the whole thing will like, okay, I can do this. I understand where everything is in space. I understand how I can simplify it. There's still things I can tell you when I paint this that I'll discover. I mean, there's any number of things that are going to happen, but this has really helped. And I made a couple of adjustments, but there's the finished idea. And you can feel the way you're pulled down the river to that little dark back there at the end of the rock wall, and then the complexity of those trees, and then the distance. You can feel the sunlight hitting the trees. And I'm excited to paint it. I'm going to paint it next week and I'm excited about it. I have not lost or diminished my sense of discovery or excitement about this image by having drawn it carefully.
So with planning, I think the point is you can focus at the job at hand and not finding yourself three, four hours into the painting wondering, now aren't the mountains supposed to be on the left-hand side? And I also was in a podcast this week, Learn to Paint podcast, run by Kelly Ann Powers. She asked some good questions. It was 45 minutes, I think, of very, uh, a lot of good material about composition, about painting, about plein air. And it, it sounds a little bit like I had three cups of coffee just before the interview, but I think you'll find it engaging. Uh, the link, and it's always a bit of a mystery how this works, should be right here, but if it's not, then you just click down below where it says show me and the link is right there. There's hardly anything printed there this week. So you just go there and please do like the video if you liked it. Please do subscribe and I will see you on Tuesday. I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye for now.